Let's talk a little bit about spirituality and technology and the impact of technology upon spirituality. I've been living in this flat for a couple of months now just as a temporary solution while we get our actual flat renovated and one of the things that I've noticed here in my father-in-law's office is this horseshoe and of course you can see it's, a, it's an old rusty horseshoe and it's one of the most common most mainstay superstitions throughout Europe is that if you keep a horseshoe in your house upright it'll bring you luck. Now where does that come from? Most of you watching my show will probably know that it comes from the idea that spirits don't particularly like iron. In fact this comes across in a lot of literature about the fair folk, right? Fairies and pixies and so on and so forth, who can only be harmed by the use of an iron weapon. Now what is it about iron that really harms spirits? Well my guess is that it's simply a new technology. New you say? Well it's not that new, is it? Well, actually, it's 5,000 to 8,000 years old, right? The first instances of blacksmithing that we find in the world come from the Hittites in Egypt around five to 8,000 years ago. And five to 8,000 years really isn't very long in terms of human existence on this planet. So yes, on the larger scale of things, iron is a very fresh new technology. Nowhere near as new technology as our mobile phone of course, and this actually brings me to the core of what I wanted to talk about today, is considering how much time we spend of our day using our mobile phones and in front of screens, working at computers, answering emails, getting messages on our tablets and mobile devices, but why don't they appear in our dreams? And I think that there may be a correlation between the reason why iron is such a detractor for spirits and why we don't have mobile phones in our dreams. I think there's a bit of crossover there actually is because if we understand the universe to be mental in nature, first and foremost, that first there is mind and that matter arises within vast mind, then the spirits are really a manifestation of this mind in the same way as any conscious being is a manifestation of this mind, right? Like a radio receiver that is tuned in to the greater mind. And spirits are just the same, except that they're not embodied in a material form. But they share that mind space, right? They exist in our collective unconscious. Now, for any of you who still imagine that I mean by this that they are not real, that they only exist in our heads, uh, please refer to my earlier videos. I'm not going to rehash this stuff. But our collective unconscious is ancient. In fact, it's prehistoric. And so the things that tend to populate it tend to be much more primordial. The kinds of elements and experiences that people have been having not for five to eight thousand years, but for millions of years. And so when these spirits come in contact with something that is just not natural to them, not a part of their natural habitat like iron, they balk and it's just not something that they're comfortable with and so they tend to not stick around. And while this is just speculation, I wouldn't be surprised if spirits have the same attitude towards our technology-focused society as they do towards iron. I mean, if iron is such a problem for them, then why wouldn't the plastics and silicons that we use in our technology not be a similar source of discomfort for these spirits? Now, I very often bring my mobile phone into the circle with me when I'm doing evocations because maybe I've got some information written on there that I want to refer to. Our mobile phones have become uh, really a source of information and so we think of them as just modern books, but they're not modern books. The act of writing, the act of handwriting has existed for far longer. And this brings another thought to my mind on the topic of lucid dreaming. For those of you who don't know what lucid dreaming, it's the ability to become aware that you're dreaming while you're still dreaming and not wake up and actually have a wonderful time in your dream by just directing what's going to happen next. It's a fantastic experience and one of the methods that people use to actually get a lucid dream is by writing down their dreams in a dream journal. And I was fascinated to discover that people who type their dreams in an electronic diary or whatever it might be, 
don't tend to get the same results as people who handwrite their dreams. Now, I haven't handwritten anything in such a long time, and yet the act of handwriting has always had a very deep spiritual impact on me in a way that typing never has. And it could be that there is a disconnect between the very automatic and repetitive action of pressing on buttons. Pressing on this button really is the same thing as pressing on that button, it's just a little bit to the left. Whereas when you're drawing each letter, that's a very unique experience that goes straight to your unconscious and that your unconscious hangs on to and makes a record of and understands essentially. Whereas pushing on buttons doesn't have that kind of differentiation, doesn't have that artistic side to it, which speaks directly to the soul. So I don't know, these are just a few thoughts that have been going on in my head and do I have any conclusions? No, I expect one of the conclusions that we could come to is that bringing a phone into the circle when you're doing an evocation might not be the best idea after all. And that if you do have any electronic documents, it's probably a good idea to just handwrite them onto a piece of paper that you can bring into the circle, which won't have that same jarring effect on the spirits and your own subconscious mind, which still doesn't know how to handle 8,000 year old iron, let alone the silicon circuitry of a mobile phone. There we go. If you have any thoughts on the compatibility or lack of compatibility between technology and spiritual practice, I'd be fascinated to know what you think. If you've got any particular experiences where something wasn't going very well and then you removed a technological element and then suddenly it was happening, or vice versa, maybe you got evidence to the contrary, then I'd love to know what your thoughts are. Please leave a comment down below so that we can all grow from your experience and possibly integrate your thoughts into our own practice. Naturally, if you'd like to talk to other practitioners about this topic, then come and join us on the Foolish Fish Discord, which is open to all Foolish Fish members. Whether you decide to join on YouTube memberships or Patreon, I tend to get a little bit more of the proceeds if you join on Patreon, just in case that had any bearing on which one to choose. And speaking of memberships, I really wanted to extend a heartfelt thank you to all the members on the channel. And in particular, our Level Infinity members, David Venturini, Caitlin Kopok, Aritz Murueta Ramos, Howard Wolf, Linda Hendricks, Stephen Hunter, Susanna Red Elves, and our new member, Thomas. Thank you so, so much for your support. And as always, a huge thank you to the Level 3 members whose names you can see scrolling on the left. Please look after yourselves and each other, and I'll see you very soon with another video. Take care. Bye-bye.